Hey, welcome to round three of this uh, Blue White Spirit Delver Vaunt review, let's say. Here I was playing against the mighty Wizbit. I have no clue what they're playing, so um, but they're on the play. Um, they start off with a City of Brass. At this point, with the format and the state that it's in, that basically tell, tells me that they're on Dirwalk Tibbled. So I'm pretty happy I kept a hand with like Ponder, Brainstorm, Force of Will, and, and uh, Source of Plowshares, and the Clarion Spirit. The Source of Plowshares doesn't do much in this matchup, so I'm looking to brainstorm that away. But I have a Force of Will, I have a Clarion Spirit to uh, potentially put on some pressure. So I'm happy I, I, I kept this. It's just a good hand. And uh, now I see that they are uh, most likely on Turbo Tibbled. I find another land, and I decide to go for the Ponder here. I have at least one card that I uh, want to... Put away with the brainstorm, so I don't think it's good enough to uh, just fire it off. I've got to hope that the first force of will is good enough, but there's a pretty good chance that they have a, a force of will backed up uh, early combo here. I decide to shuffle uh, since I wait. I decide not to shuffle. Um, why did I decide not to shuffle? Uh, I think I wanted to put enough of pressure on them, so I had to hope that my first force of will was good enough. And then I can curve Clarion Spirit into Clarion Spirit plus Brainstorm. Um, the reason I did this, and I think it, it's not even that bad, um, there's a chance that they don't have to turn 2 Tybalt, or there's a chance that they have... Uh, uh, do have it turned through, but don't have the protection. I think um, my way of winning this uh, game main board without lightning bolts or anything in my deck is to just get a board state going. Basically, my experience is that uh, whenever the deck falls up behind far enough on the board, like uh, even to small creatures, if you have a couple of small creatures, they just can't win anymore. So my hope here is that me going Clarion Spirit into Clarion Spirit Brainstorm basically locks up the game for me. And that that is worth enough to go for. Um, if we look at what I saw with the Brainstorm, I saw a Wasteland and the two Clarion Spirits. So what I'm going to try to do here is hope they can't go on turn two, because they're afraid of days, for example. Um, and uh, Wasteland them on turn two and go from there if they do try to go for it of course i can decide to go for the clarion spirits uh instead of wastelanding them but i think here i just hope that they don't go for it and turn to wasteland them and see if i get more time by having them play around uh, days um oops, sorry um so i decide to keep it um banking on the fact that uh, I have to hope that they don't have it uh, protected too early. They go for the Shardless Agent with a Simeon Spirit Guide, protect the Tybalt with a Force of Will, and at, at this point, um, I don't think I uh, have a chance to win this game. Um, I didn't get on the board before they had the Tybalt. They have a Shardless Agent to block a Clarion Spirit attack on their Tybalt, and I, I just don't think uh, there's a good way for me back into this. So I just scoop it up. This is what happens sometimes. They have to protect it uh, to the halt before we get a board, st board state. So uh, we just uh, scoop them up and go from there. Um, here, um, this is post board. We get to bring in the two Lavinias, two blue elemental blasts, uh, Spelpius. Um, I think it's those five cards. And oh, and the Hellbreacher. Uh, for four sorts of plowshares, two ethereal forages, and I board out of ponder since I don't have, I think I have a lot of time to mess mess around with um, uh, cantripping, and I thought that having the bubbles in my deck was more powerful, both for my predicts, but also because I think just getting any board state, even just clarion spirit plus one spirit of a bubble, um, is quickly enough to put uh, pressure on Tybalt and uh, win the game that way. So that's what I decide to do, um, and let's go from there. Uh, I, of course, uh, want to be on the play. Um, I keep a hand that has 
Days and Force of Negation, which are like two counters, but then two very expensive cards after that. And just have to hope that they're um, that my counters are good, or that I get uh, to the later part of the game where I can start Hope Breachering and uh, Skyclave Apparition. So here I find another Force of Will, which means that I can uh, fight over their cards even more. Um, this is a spot where I was thinking about hill breaching here, but I didn't really like tapping out. So I think I end up doing nothing. No. So the thing here is, uh, I wanted to cast hill breach here, but they went up to eight cards and didn't make a second land drop. And I decided that um, if they have no mana sources in their hand, um, the chance that they have forces or Cards that are just stack interaction is just so big that I'd rather not put stuff on the stack when they are going to discard. Um, I think that if I'm uh, not making any land drops anymore, then there's consideration to start trading resources. But as long as I'm making land drops and they're not, I just want to have this game go on like this. Now I do find a ponder, uh, which is a card I can cast while keeping Force of Negation or Hull Reacher up. And that's why I decide to uh, cast it. Um, I get uh, some information off the top of my library for my predict. And I now know that there is a, a brainstorm on top as well. So here they make a land drop. So now there's a bit more of a reason for me to cast spells. So what I do, I predict myself uh, hitting the um, first brainstorm I knew was there. And there's another one. And I decide to cast my brainstorm so I can uh, hit more land drops. At this point, they uh, made their land drop and they see that I'm tapping out. So they, they decide that that's the mo moment to go for it in their own end step. So court good for me because that means I can use my force of negations. Um, so I force of will their of uh, I force of negation their Tybalt. Um. Sadly, they have a uh, mana open since they use double spirit guides. Um, I think that's interesting. I think there's uh, usually more reason to keep a spirit guide, but I think they're concerned with the colors of mana they have remaining after uh, using the spirit guides. Um, so if they um, use two lands here, maybe they expect they don't have a certain color anymore or... I don't know, I think this is interesting, but in this case, it's clear to me I can't try and daze their spell, so they're just gonna do this. They misdirect my force of negation, which causes me to force of negation again, and they miscall the dispute my force of negation. Now, at this point, I'm considering, like, okay, it's their end step. Um, they can't activate Tybalt now, and they're just gonna pass back to me. Um, in my mind, in my not that smart mind, I'm like, oh yeah, Skyclave Apparition, when then that comes into play, I can remove a permanent from the battlefield. What would I rather do? Have a Tybalt underneath my Skyclave Apparition? Or um, have, a, or, or Force of Will the Tybalt and then have a Skyclave Apparition in my hand? Um, I decided it's better to be able to develop a 2-2 body um, and remove their Tybalt without them getting activated and then still have the Force of Will in my hand. Um, which made, made perfect sense at the moment, but of course, that's not how Skyclave Apparition works. So, I made a huge blender here. I uh, let this all resolve, planning on just Skyclave Apparitioning their Tybalt. I even get to this point, a, I draw a Delver, I cast my Skyclave Apparition, at which point I realize that I have no targets for Skyclave Apparition. Um, what you probably know, but what I completely missed, is that Skyclave Apparition does not remove permanence with a Convert Manacle stuff higher than 4. So I play a 3 mana 2 2 here against my opponent's Tybalt that does nothing except for being a 3 mana 2 2. Um, at this point, I inform my opponent that I probably should have Force of Wills that. Um, but luckily, I do find a Delver to put some more pressure on it. Um, I think at this point, um, had I not told my opponent that I should have Force of Will that card, 
think there's a reasonable chance that they mine this on my Skyclave apparition if they have a third mana source. Uh, they don't do it there, so I think either they're playing around me having the force of will, which I indicated in chat, or they just don't have the third mana source. They, they hit it off of the uh, Tybalt. I blew a mental blast from my side, a flood strength from theirs. Um, I don't flip my Delver of Secrets, uh, sadly. So I just attack the Tybalt for three. And I still don't have good pressure on it. So this, this is starting to become an issue, I think. Um, I play another creature, since I really want to get stuff into play. Um, which is a counter. It's a pretty bad spot for me still. Uh, they can't really minus here, since... Um, if they still assume I have Forcible in my hand, them taking my Skyclave Apparition and me countering it basically means they don't get value from their Tybalt and I kill it with my Delver. So they decide to plus it again, um, probably believing my story of having a Forcible. They get a Babel from my uh, side of the deck and I now still don't flip my Delver. So here we're getting more and more issues with the Skyclave Apparitions. Um, I'm attacking the Tilbolt for a tree again, which is not enough to kill it, but puts it lower. And we play another Skyclave Apparition. Um, also, just a 3 mana 2-2 two -two that does nothing. So far I've been playing 3 mana 2-2s two and 1 mana 1-1s one this game. Um, they have a Sharkless Agent, which hits a, uh, a Valky. Um, at this point, like my main goal is to try and get the Tybalt off the board. And if I let both the Sharkless Agent and the Valky resolve, uh, first off, the Valky is going to take my Hill Breacher as far as long as it's in play, so they, they get the option to deny me that card. But I think the bigger problem is that them having two, two power creatures basically means they can trade with both, both my Skyclaves, and no matter if I flip my Delver or not, I'm not going to get the Tybalt off the board. I decide that I need to have pressure in play, since that's, like I said in game 1, I think that's the way you win this matchup, you just have creatures in play. Like, just any creatures in play makes both Oko and Tybalt a lot worse. So I force the Tybalt and let the Sharkless Agent resolve. I now do flip my Delver with a Spell Pierce, which isn't too great here, but this does mean I get to kill the Tybalt. Um, I, I take it with all three, they decide to take the tray to... Uh, Reduce my board state, and I have 5 power remaining. Now they fetch, they play an Oko, but well, I still have some creatures in play. So I have a 2 2 and a Delver, I attack down their Oko. Now they get to make a food and um, protect their Oko with that, but the Delver still kills it. And I bubble myself seeing a Court of Grace. Um, now, that was the seventh card I boarded in, which I actually missed at the start. Um, the reason I wanted to have Court of Grace in my deck is I think having pressure is important in this, in this matchup, but um, I have to assume I can stop their first Tybalt. Like, if I don't do that and I just get a turn 2 Tybalt on the board, it's very unlikely that I win. Um, but assuming I can stop their first Tybalt, any board pressure I can get is important. And Court of Grace is a uh, board pressure that gets around um, at the removal functions of Oko and Tybalt. So I think it's actually pretty good to have that in your deck, just as something they can't interact at with that is going to make bodies. And as soon as you have like 1-4 for Angel out, 2-4 for Angel out, the game is just over. So I, I I like having something like that in my deck, even though it's, well, this is a combo matchup. Uh, I want efficient creatures and um, counter spells normally, but I, I think Court of Grace is important enough to lock up games against a deck like this. So um, we're buying on board, but we're lucky, and as I'm also saying that in chat to my opponent is... They're on the tree Tybalt, uh, a tree Falky build, uh, which a lot of people are, and this is like the second or third game I win against Turbo Tybalt now because they don't have the fort. So I'm very happy with that, and 
they do uh, uh, try to counter my Court of Grace here, which is basically going to make it that none of their planeswalkers get them back in the game. Um, but they go to zero cards uh, doing that, so I can easily force wheel this. And with Court of Grace on the battlefield, I don't think I can lose from this, this spot on. Like, assuming the food doesn't get through this turn cycle and I can just trade it off, I think this game is over. And they decide the same. So, from this point on, I'm gonna make 4 4s every turn. They don't have anything that attacks immediately, and that just puts the game out of reach. To game 3, um, we. I I think we sideboarded the same. Oh no, I decided to take out my predicts um, for something else. Um, oh, I think I already took those out. Game two as well. Uh, this basically is me just saying, like, those are too slow. I just want to try it like this. Um, here I have a hand with two fresh draws, three land, force negation. I think I have to uh, keep this, but it's not great. And it's very likely that I have to pitch my pressure to the Force of Negation. They go for the turn 1 outburst after mulliganing to 6. And I Force of Negation then. Uh, to my excitement, it, it actually works. And I draw another Delver. So I'm very happy with this. Uh, I scry. Um, I look at the top card of my uh, deck here. I see that it's a card I don't want. Uh, and decide that I want to fetch first. I think Arterial Forager is a very good card here, but I, I just want to find interaction. I have a couple of very important cards post board, and I want to dig to those instead of more threats since I already have the Delver. I find another Bauble and a Delver, not, not great, but it'll do. Um, I get to Scry again, uh, again here by looking at the top of my deck. I see the Court of Grace, but at, at this point I don't think I want it yet. I don't have the mana yet, and the game is not in the spot where that's good. Um, what I decide to do here is just attack and pass with my mana open, because I think that having uh, Petty Theft open uh, is just very powerful versus them. Um, they hit the third land and cascade into a Tybalt, of course. So they, made, they make the Tybalt, and at this point, with Ardent Priest still on the stack, I have all the time in the world to uh, use my Petty Theft on the Tybalt. Um, I know from this point on that I um, am likely to get enough pressure into play to get rid of their stuff. Um, because I have the Flash Brazen Borrower, I have another creature in hand, and I just... And here I decide to uh, put as much pressure into play as I can. So I play a second Delver and the Ethereal Forager. And they have a turn off doing nothing. Now I flip my Delvers and the game is over here. Like none of their Planeswalkers actually come back from from this spot. So. Um, they keep playing but I, I'm not sure what, the, what they can have here. And they uh, scoop the turn after. So. Um, I think this is an interesting game to well, illustrate how I look at this matchup. Uh, basically, I gave up quite a bit to try and get get pressure into play here and there. Um, but also, I got lucky that they're on the three Valky build um, in game two. Else, I could definitely have lost that. And here, I just got away with them having no protection. But you can't always have the turn 1 and protection or the turn 2 and protection. Uh, th there's going to be some games where you just do what they did here. And that is uh, play a Tybalt, get it counter, play a second Tybalt, your opponent interacts with it, and then the game is just over. So it's very consistent, but also uh, it gets into spots where the game just, they just can't win the game anymore. Um, uh, this was it for this round. I wanted to... I wanted two to one and uh, let's see what happens in the next.